everybody, and welcome to another edition of our complete Gay Crash Set Review. I'm Evan Irwin. This is... Bradley Nelson. The one and only. There's only one of me. There's only one. And sometimes we talk about cards that are magic-esque. And today we're talking about the white ones that are Orzovian and Gay Crash. Just the most beautiful ones of all. Just the best. Black-white cards are the best. They are. And we're going to begin with one of the cool white combat tricks of the format slash set, Aerial Maneuver. What's your favorite Aerial Maneuver? I'm going to go with a flying jump kick. I'm going to go with a barrel roll. Okay. I think yours wins. I think mine has way better internet memes than yours does. We're probably just going to have to demonstrate, though, and see whose is better. We shouldn't. That would not go we well. <laughs> okay. So this card, Aerial Maneuver is awesome because it's not just sort of your skillful lunge-esque combat no. trick. It's got, it's got some, some different uses. Explain it for me. All right. So giving a pump spell flying or the ability to give the creature flying mm -hmm. uh, is so cool because not only can you just use it for evasion to get through your opponent's board, but you can block something with flying. Like Spidery mm -hmm. Grass was like really sweet in Innistrad block because you could block a flyer. Right. But now you can just attack them with it instead of just trying to you know, find the best way to deal with their one creature that's the biggest on their side of the board. Like, how do I get them to block here? No, you just fly and kill them and so it do works, whatever. Yeah, it works both in tempo. It works when you're trying to block. You know what I mean? Like, yep. it's just your good old-fashioned pump spell. I mean, it does give them first strike, so you're still going to be able to sort of surprise them that mm -hmm. way as well. Like, there's a lot of things in this card that are not just, you know, your run-of-the-mill trick. No, you're going to see this being played a little bit more than most pump spells. But it is going to go through that r fantastically classic sequence where you play it, and then they read it, and they get really sad, and they put their creature in the graveyard. And you win. That's right. Next up is Angelic Edict. Five mana sorcery, exile, duder, thinger, and chainer guy. I, I think at five mana it should have been instant, but we'll say, okay, it's a sorcery. It's a limited card, right? It, but it's not that good of a limited card because of all the battalion and all the blood rush and things like that. And I think that's why they made it sorcery. Yeah. I mean, I literally think that's yep. the reason. I mean, it could have been. It could have been mm -hmm. less mana. Who cares? Like, it just... But they made it what well, they made it, I think, because they're sort of crafting an environment. This to yes. me looks like one of those where like the developers had a heavy hand in terms of mm -hmm. what is costed how. Mm -hmm. This is one of those cards they look at. Angelic Skirmisher, however, is super sweet, I think. I saw this in a lot of ways. No, I, I had a huge crush on Battle Grace Angel. Mm. I used to play a lot of block, and that was the best card in the format. Like literally, your opponent would play planeswalkers, wrath effects, martial coups, but whoever had a Battle Grace Angel. Last won the game. <laughs> and this feels a lot like it, but it's that same turn, right? You play it, you get lifelink, you win the swing, you can get vigilance if that's important. Like mm -hmm. it having an ability just to play a main phase one without haste, but still get this huge ability for the combat is is amazing. I think this card's going to be not only a limited all-star, but you're gonna see some block applications. And I wish it was, you know, even close to all the other angels that exist right now. It isn't, but the, 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 the number one thing I find most interesting about this card is, is the fact that it says each combat. Yeah. It's not just yours. It's not just till the end of the, mm -hmm. the, end of your next turn. It is, it is what you need it to be when, when it happens. So in a multiplayer environment, which is actually what I think this is best sort of designed yeah. for, um, you know, during this guy's turn, you want lifelink, but during that guy's turn, you want first strike. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and there's different ways that you can do that and engineer it so that you just don't get blown out. Yeah, no, I think it, that, I didn't even think about that during their turn because sure. vigilance on your opponent's turn is probably the most powerful thing <laughs> on the planet. It's the reason I didn't point out vigilance. It's, it's big, <laughs> whatever. Great and limited. Don't yep. touch and constructed. Assault Griffin coming back, baby, from yes. Magic 2010, 2011? Yeah, I think it was 2011 because 2010 was Snap and Drake because I lost uh, a lot to that. Mm -hmm. And then they moved it over to white. Yep. And then here we are. Fantastic limited card. Yes. Ain't going to find constructed. I mean, it's meat and potatoes. That's all it is. Them meat, them potatoes. Enjoy <laughs> it. I'm Southern. What? Uh, Basilica Guards reminds me of Guardians of Acrossa. Remember that card? Yes. From yeah. Shards? Oh, yeah. And Shards from freaking Shards. <laughs> um, when it has, you know, it's got like, it's a three mana. Uh, that was an 04. This is a 1 4. Magic creatures are better these days. Um, both with Defender, but it had sort of the block mechanic. For that, was Exalted. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, Defenders of Acrossa, I don't think actually did have Defender now that I think of it. The Guardians, rather. N no. Um, that means they could attack as a 1 5, which is nice. But regardless, the point is, 
these guys are actually fine. That's my whole my whole roundabout way of saying that I think these cards are really good. Just like Guardians was a underrated card that got better as you got you know more inundated mm -hmm. with the limited format. I think these cards are really good. Yeah, like um, and and this is the first card with Extort that we're going to talk about. So I want to like spend some time on this. Let's ability. talk about Extort. I love yeah. Extort. I don't even I, I I love it, but I have no idea how good it's going to be or how much. Like, is it better to just have everything with Extort because all the creatures are a little powered down. The permanence. Bit. There's a oh, bear. He's fine. I mean, the bear's really good. But so I don't know if you can just fill your entire deck with and just try to extort him all the time. I, I, I'm of the opinion you extort all the time. You get you put in all the goodies. Everything all of a sudden has kickers on it, and I don't care if I have to pay four mana for my tutu. Yeah. If my tutu comes into play and drains two, yeah. right? Like it's fine. You know, like. I, does that I mean, mean it's, it's the, incre the incremental advantages that this thing just continually gives. And, and a card like Basilica Guards, in, in particular, mm -hmm. is a card that they don't want to kill. You don't want to waste a rule spell on this stupid 1-4 guy, but his extort ability could literally kill you. Yes, and, and the, the unique thing I can't wait to do at the pre-release, that's why I really want to try Orzov at least once, mm -hmm. is do you just not play your non-extort cards until you have exhausted all your extort cards and then start playing your 2-drops and right. things like that? I want to play all my extort things out, and then I want to play everything else. And it just do you run like, like nineteen lands? Like you know, I do just what to I got sure to do yeah. to get maximum value because this oh man, it, this is a mechanic that allows you to just be greedy. And that one point where your opponent is just literally dead to any card on top of your library that's no! not a land. She's like, if it has a casting cost, you are done, sir. That is amazing. Yeah. You know, if you got two or three extort guys out and they're at two or three life. Oh. Yeah, they love the top deck sweats and this card definitely, this, this ability gives you that. So good. Yeah. So good. Blind Obedience. Talk about a sweet extort card. Yeah, this one, I, I do really like it. This this just says, Hell Rider, you have no business being in this game. Thunder Mile Guy, nothing. I get that Kismet was two more mana and affected Lance. Mm -hmm. But wow, I think this card is sweetly pushed. I mean, yeah, yeah. it wrecks haste. You know, it gives yes. you the extra turns that you want in a control deck mm -hmm. to sort of to, to allow you to play your Wraths and then, yeah. you know, pay an extra mana for them and get value. It, it, it also can be very offensive, too. Mm -hmm. Like, you can put it in a White Weenie deck because then yeah. they have no defenders. Like, a Hunt Master comes to play tapped isn't that bad of a thing. Plus, it's White Reach. Like, wow. that's the cool thing about this is, like, a, a White Weenie deck never got to do the last points of damage. Right. And but now, now they, they have that. Absolutely. They got Blind Obedience. They got Syndicate Tides, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, the, oh, gosh, I can't wait. I, I bought one of these foil for my cube. I think it's going to be great. Yeah. I think it's going to be really, really strong. I think it's going to be showing up and constructed in a variety of ways, both in control and or in aggro. Yeah. It probably is going to find a home in one or the other. What's going to find home in aggro, though? For, for the Blind Obedience? No, no, no. Oh, you mean for the Boros Elite that happens the, to be on the screen right yes, now? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's what I was trying to get at. You literally set me up and I screwed it up. No, it's okay. Uh, it's you, I'll get one. Oh. Well, I used it now. Because <laughs> Boros Elite, it's no Wild Nacatl, okay? It's no. But it's, it's really good. It's kind of a Wild Nacatl. It tries. Yeah, it tries really hard to be a kitty cat. It tries hard. It's a, it's a really uh, awkward top deck where Wild Nacatl at least was a 3-3. Three, three. Mm -hmm. You know, Wild Nacatl is just too good. Um, but it is, you know, like, it's cool. Like, I like the design. I like what they were doing with it. I, you know, they wanted this to be the Boros Nakato. Yes. You know? they, they engineered it such. So they gave it the mechanic. They made it pump. It's going to be great and limited. It might actually get there and constructed. I'm curious about both. I, I just need to see these abilities. Like, I, I just, I want to see them so bad. Well, I want to say 100% constructed, but I, I will say that I'm iffy on, or not constructed, I'm saying 100% unlimited, unlimited. limited. But I'm really iffy on constructed. Sometimes you just need a one drop. Yeah. And this is a pretty decent one. And it's a human. Yeah, yeah. and that matters. Court Street Denizen, however. Now, this, this guy is going to do insane things in limited. Yeah, unbelievable. Insane. You just never know when you get to block anymore. It's just ah. like that, that, that blocking shouldn't even exist. Like, I think there's just going to be a set where they're like, new rule change, you can't block. <laughs> well, I mean, they just make mechanics <coughs> that really try to encourage you not to yeah. block. Really, really, really. Like, do you are you sure you want to block that green, red, anything? Are you sure you don't want to attack? Like, that should just be a new thing on Moto where, like, if you just <laughs> don't attack, are you sure you would not like to attack? And you're like, I don't have any guys. But they're like, you sure? Yeah. You sure you're not going to flash in a haste guy for just whatever reason? It's yeah, fine. It could happen. All I got to say is, again, no construct applications, but in limited, this guy is awesome. He's going to be very, very oh, good. It reminds me of Waxmane Baku. I, I don't even know what that card does. That card was sweet. That card was a three mana two two. And whenever you played a spirit spell, you put a key counter on it, and then you removed a key counter to tap one of the guys. 
Why would a key do that? Well, it was like KI. Did it? Did it, it was a oh, okay. spirit counter essentially? Oh, okay. It's a long story. I, I was love like champions. It unlocks Leave its me heart. alone. Actually, it was betrayers, but whatever. <laughs> Daring Skyjack. Skyjack? Really? What's a Skyjack? It's like Skynet, but someone screwed up and hit the wrong key. Oh, oh, oh he flies with computers. He does, and he cool. flies on top of a, a that's clock a walkway with a dude. It's, a I was bird. thinking, I was thinking that like just like gravity doesn't work anymore, and that's just a clock tower. I mean, all I'm saying is like I appreciate the fact that you know uh, Blade of the Sixth Pride is just getting better and better. Yeah, and that Blade of the Sixth Pride type creatures, whether it's a Quarter Paladin or it's Daring Skyjack, like basically it's okay to print a white and a colorless three one. Because that was like, oh my god, and back in Future yeah. Sight. No, that never happened before. Literally, mm -hmm. never been a white Nicola 3 1. And then they're like, okay, we print this, it's fine. They, I think they reprinted it and it was fine. Yeah. And then they started adding abilities to it, like a quarter oh, power. And they've and all just been completely fair, right? And they're fine. I mean, they're the one toughness. Mm -hmm. That's what always gets you. And that's what mm -hmm. saves you. It lets you trade for anything. Yep. Which is fine. This card, fine and limited. It's actually pretty good and limited. I think it's very good and very limited. Very good and limited. Uh, not constructed, but it's fine. Yep. Debtor's Pulpit. Uh, now, whereas we saw that the market, the 10th Street market was not worth it, I no. feel like this is worth it. I do feel like this is worth it, and I cannot wait for the Street Sweeper <laughs> pulpit, like, just show off. Just keep it tapped. I got to. <laughs> That's all I can do now. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's it's uncommon where, you know, I think the other one was it was common, as I recall, the 10th yep. Street market. But, uh, but, yeah, this is where you would... You're spending five mana, you play this card, you say go. You untap, and you're basically losing this land, but what you're gaining with it is from mm -hmm. that point onward, you know, you have that tap ability yeah, for their best creature. I think you actually just play this on turn s with a six land up, so you get the effect right away. It, this it one's depends. way more important, yeah. Right, on the board state and blah, 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 blah. But it's, it's a great late game spell after you played a bunch of guys. Yes, it's very, very good and limited. Don't get near it constructed. Dutiful Thrall. That's uh, a dutiful thrall. He is. He's a thrall. They're just not that exciting. The he ones that tap things are awesome. The most dutiful thrall <laughs> in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> woo! I'm bringing a little prince in here just to remind you guys. Okay. Seriously. It just cards. reminds me that I, I am younger than you. It, I, I usually just think we're the same age, and then things like that happen. And then I'm old all of a sudden. I don't care. Purple Rain, people. Purple Rain. Um, oh, I don't know what Purple Rain is either. Uh, don't watch the movie. <laughs> uh, Dutiful Thrall is when you need a one drop. That's what this card tells me. You know, you're looking at your aggro deck and you're like, my curve is a little awkward. I have too many four drops or I have too many five drops. Really? Cut one of the old, you know, cut one of those guys. Get this guy in there for the one drop. I think that the opposite. I think this guy is your extort card because it like it gives you regenerate and it's a top deck that's just one mana to give you enough mana to play sure. all your extort spells. I'm thinking more Boros. You're thinking more Orzov. Yeah, because it's an Orzov card. Well, because they have the Orzov symbol on it, and because it regenerates for a black, doesn't mean it's Spectral Links. It's just it's just a white duder with a random regeneration ability on it. I mean, it's very Spectral Linksy. I know. And I looked at. I mean, Spectral Links have pro, pro green and another power, yeah. but you know, it was another mana. But whatever. The point <laughs> is. Point is, I think this guy he just he, he's he's fine. He's probably your twenty third card. You're never going to be excited about him, but he can get in there when yeah. you need to. Yep. He's he's a good wall. I think he's. Let's I'm excited it. about him for extort. Frontline medic. Oh my god, it's finally here! All right, this is my favorite card in the set, and there's only one reason. The moment I saw this card, I just I died a little of, from excitement. I don't even know if you can do that, but I did it, and because I am a Team Fortress Two fan. And this okay. card is from Team Fortress 2. The medic, like, exact, ex the card came from the game. Huh. I don't know if you ever played the game. Not enough to, for me to be able to put the connection between the frontline medic and the medic well, in Team Fortress 2. The, Explain the, it for me. The medic goes uber. It heals people, which it's healing you from bonfires. Okay. But then eventually it'll go indestructible with a companion. And then that companion can't get hurt. You can't get hurt. And that's what this card does. So... All I can tell you is if you ever played the game, you know this card's busted because whoever has the medic beats the other person and you just go all in with a medic and go uber happy and you just win. Wow. So anyway, I, I, I love this card. I love it because it just comes from my favorite video game of all time. I, I have loved this card from the moment that I saw it. Now, for what it's worth, in the show, I called it a top-down design that was wrong. It's a bottom-up design where it just like does stuff and yeah. they kind of like you know, put creature types on it and they make this weird name for it and this art that they might just had laying around. Um, but, you know, what What I love about it is just like the benefits you were explaining. You can, you attack into Restoration Angels, you don't yes. care. You attack into their Thragtusks, you don't care. 
You just don't care. No. This is like this is just like honey badger medic. That's what it is. <laughs> it is. He, he does he, and he does everything. Like I yeah. think like green white decks or Naya based decks or any 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 aggression, there's like two cards that are like your culprits. Bonfire of the Damned mm -hmm. and Sphinx's Revelation. Those are the cards you lose to more often than anything. Like they just survive with a Sphinx's Rev the turn you attack. Yep. Or they just try to get ahead. Neither of these cards does anything to this guy. So like if he's in play, he's so much better than if he wasn't. Mm. Like, the game situation is just going to be unbelievable. Like, I am, I cannot wait to play with this card, and it's going to just warp mag standard right now. It it's it's going to warp, I think, around white aggro decks, whether yes. it's Naya or whether it's Boros or whether it's some weird Orzhov thing or whatever. It's like, this guy just, he does everything you want him to do. Yeah, Searing Spear is going to have to be played more often in different decks. I know it's played in a lot of the Red Aggression decks, but like Naya is going to probably want to play that more than Searing Spear. Mm -hmm. Or not, sorry, sorry, Searing Spear, Selesnya Charm. Sure. Uh, because this guy has to get off the table. If you can't deal with him, you can't interact with your opponent anymore in any way. Wow. I, I love it. I've the card is very good. Yes, and I've already played with it, and it was amazing. I'm nice so excited. Nice Miracle Bonfire. <laughs> going right into my cube, I can't wait. Not going into my cube is getting <laughs> Not. I'm sorry. What? This is literally like the first time I've seen a Planeswalker since Zendikar block? Since like Chandra Ablaze? You know what I mean? Yeah. Since it was like really over the top, mm -hmm. like not supposed to be good. Like, no. I, look, I mean, I understand you can plus one and gain ten counters or something. You're <laughs> losing. <laughs> You're losing. I just did it with that. It's, as a weird little creature, it's fine. Okay, it's a creature, you plus one, you say go, you have an indestructible 5-5, five five or whatever, you know, that's immune to their wrath. Or it's a 4-4, four because four they don't have anything. Well, no, you plus one's when you activate it, regardless of how many creatures oh, they okay, have. Oh, okay, sure, so, yeah. Which is fine. It's just like, I don't, I get they're trying to make Planeswalkers different. I wish they hadn't done that on Gideon, like... Because like Gideon's our homeboy, man. Gideon's like sweet. We we came to love him. I missed playing with him. I played him all the time. <sighs> he he so won good. me a GP. Like, uh, he is my favorite of all time. He's so good. And, like, I never get excited about magic cards. Like, like, like the, the hype, like Gideon's coming back or Jace coming back. I'm like, I'll just see what it does when it comes out. But Gideon, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my God, it might be Boros. And it might, like, have cool, oh. like, a smite abilities. Yeah. Like, deal damage to attacking creatures. I was ready for, like, a Johnny Vengeance 2.0, like, bigger, scarier, like, doing crazy stuff. I just, I just, I just... I'm sorry. It's like the Turbo Fog Planeswalker. Why does that have to exist? Uh, yeah, it works in Turbo Fog. I've heard other people say that. Like, yeah. they're excited about the ability to plus one, add five counters, yeah. and then fog. We're all excited that Turbo Fog could be a real thing. Because uh, <laughs> that's interesting magic. Guardian of the Gateless. This card yes. seems silly, ridiculous, and limited. It's just pretty sweet, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I have the best wall ever. <laughs> I, yeah, if, I will die in this combat, but none of your stuff is going to deal damage to me. Basically, I mean, it's, yeah. it's a you know what? It's a better wall than Gideon. <laughs> <laughs> it's just guys, it's Gideon. Uh, anyway, Guardian of the Gateless is sweet just because like, it, it will save you. I mean, it's an angel. It's getting bonuses it, for when it's blocking. Three, three, four, five isn't that bad to attack as well. Yeah. But when you're way behind, this card will just save you. And, and get huge bonuses, right? I mean, like, ah, it blocks all the things. It's going to kill whatever your best thing is, if not two or three of them, mm -hmm. depending on the bonuses. Like, ugh. It's difficult to... You, That's you, a scary you, card. You never alpha your opponent, because it just gets better with the more alpha. It's like, I know it's going to die, so I might as well just block everything. Right. And kill your best thing yep. from all of its bonuses. Who cares? Yeah. Great, great and limited. Yeah, I love it. Amazing and limited. Guild Scorn Ward, not amazing and limited. Not, not at not all. Not amazing, bad. It's, it's okay. It's bad cards, and sometimes they need to exist. And sometimes they, if we don't have bad cards, we wouldn't have good cards. Right. That's right. You wouldn't know how good the good cards are yeah. if it weren't for stuff like this. I do know that the art's really sweet. Yeah. It, like, I, it always is weird. Like, some of the bad cards have the best art. They do. That's a weird for me. I feel me. bad for those artists. A little, you yeah. know, like I think they they're excited to get magic art, and they, you know, when when you do a Jace the Mind Sculpt or something, Jason Chan is going to be signing that thing until he's mm -hmm. old and gray. John Avon is going to be signing his lands until forever, you yeah. know. And then like the guy, Mr. Barger, Ryan Barger, it is also his art. You're never signing that, buddy. I'm sorry. It happens. I'm sorry. Hold the gates. Hold the gates. Yeah. Hold. Hold. I'm sorry. Anyway. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hold the gates and then, what is it, close the door? Barricade the door? <laughs> the all door. of these effects? Yes. Uh, do all the things. I don't know. It's pumping your, it's again, it's another bad card that it does give creatures you control plus one plus over each gate and vigilance. And vigilance yeah. For what it's worth, I kind of thought it was a sorcery at first, so it's way better as an enchantment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it gives you guys a vigilance. I think, like, if you ever have three gates in play and your team has vigilance, like, that is the most annoying. Like, that's good. That's worth a magic Plus card. O plus three, yes. For three mana, for the rest of the yep. game, yes. Yeah. If, in, in the right way, I think that it's, it's one that isn't strictly bad, like the, like the previous mm -hmm. card. It's, it's, it's situationally powerful mm -hmm. based on the pools that you get in sealed. Draft. Mm. No, I don't think... I, 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 it's sealed. If I play with this once, I'll be surprised, but mm -hmm. I, I will look at it multiple times. For me, it's it, going to yeah. be, you know, it's going to be one of those cards that I don't want them to play against me because if they're playing it, it's probably so good that it's going to. No, it, me this card is the kind that if they're playing against me, it's just going to take me five more turns to kill them, and I want to go talk to people. That's fair. Now, the holy mantle is so holy that right. it won't even let you talk to other so creatures. So we finally figured out that holy is more powerful than spirits. Okay. You, if you're spiritual, that's not as good as if you're holy. That's an interesting way to think about it. I don't, I don't know if the flavor team really thinks about that nomenclature well, in that well way. Well, they, they decided on it without even knowing it. They decided on it by their choices. Yes. Uh, but, yeah. This I, is a great limited enchantment. This is really good. I this don't is know, going, man. This is going to break stalemates. This is going to do scary things. I don't know, man. We, we, we might see this on a Geist. We got these enchantment decks. God, you know what? I was literally, what's this? What's the, what's the white enchantment? That plus one, plus oh for each enchantment you control and first strike. The plus one, plus one? Plus one, plus Ethereal oh. armor? Ethereal armor. Is it plus one, plus one? No, it's plus one, plus one. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so we were going over that card, you know, for Return yep. of Ravnica or whatever. I had a hunch on that card, and I was like, I want to sound like a complete idiot if I'm like, this card could maybe be good enough. So whatever. This card, maybe. Uh, giving the ability, protection from creatures and beating like the Pyroclasm effects is pretty strong. Protection from creatures on something like a Geist, because Geist yeah. is three mana and this is four mana. Yeah. That's pretty dumb. Yeah. And like, Tactic how or else are you going to stop that, that Geist? Glaring spotlight. <laughs> You're gonna put a big old spotlight <laughs> on. I am going to play we're this gonna card. We're gonna talk about that card. Later. I am going to play that card, and you are all. All right, we're waiting. We are, hold we're not gonna talk about that. it. I we'll got wait. plenty to talk about. All I'm saying is, this card used to be an auto, great and limited, never gonna play anywhere else. But now that hexproof exists, all of a sudden this card goes, huh? You follow yeah. this up on a geist. And stuff you can't got target it. You can't touch it in any possible way. No. And creatures are the Except main thing. Except for one. There is one way you can touch it. We're not talking about it. Knight of Obligation. This guy is awesome. This, like, in the Orzov, in the Orzovian-esque deck, great. Yes. It does what you want to do. It's got a big butt. It's got Vigilance so it doesn't have to tap. It's got Extort for all your spells. Mm -hmm. It's very good. This card is really good. I know it looks kind of meh. This card is, like, will do work. Yeah, it's, it's very good. Like, a 2-4 Vigilance for 4 with this Extort, like, that's pushed in my mind because the ability is so powerful. That like, ability is good. If your creature can get some damage in without its ability, huh. it's going to be amazing. That's so good. That's yeah. the, just the best for me. Now, Night Watch, that's the worst Tolerance invocation of all time. I mean, it's no Tolerance invocation, but they don't have evasion, and it's not as much color requirement. It's good to splash. Yeah, I don't want to splash this. I mean, the fact that they have Vigilance and not First Strike. Eh, it, helps, it helps your battalions out, but like... It makes It'll your only make one battalion good if you only have one in play, and I don't think battalion's the kind of effect that you just want one battalion trigger. <coughs> I guess. I don't know. It's weird. Um, the art also kind of cracks me up continuously. Yeah. Like, here come the knights. They're going to beat the crap out of you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I think of knights as those <laughs> preserving order, not the ones that show up in a bar fight to beat the crap out of you. And they don't even look like they're doing anything wrong. Yeah. They just look like they're scared of the knights. Basically, I mean, yeah. you know, like, even even the flavor text is absurd. It kind of explains we lost respect because we send the troops to ming res mingle respectively and they're beating the crap out of them. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. <laughs> Luminate Primordial. Yay. Here Yay. we go. I like this. It's swords all your, all the things. Mm -hmm. This one's actually really good in sealed, though. Yes. Because it just trades with their best dude. Yeah, it just kills something. In, well, it doesn't even trade. Well, not trade exactly. I mean, it, it, it yeah. exiles their best dude is what I mean. Yeah. It, you know, you and play your seven, you get that, and you get that. And it's that. Vigilance 4-7, so it's just Elishnorn. They just took the text from Elishnorn and put something else on it. 
Fair. <laughs> but and I loved Alish Norn. Took it from mythic to good. I mythic won't to be rare. on Baylor rights in this though, as opposed to like I used to do that with Alish Norn. But in 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 sealed and even in draft, it should be pretty solid. Draft's and a little slow, but it's yeah, a no. Slow. I mean, it, it'll it'll see play in both. It's um, good. I mean, it's fine. I think like cards like this are just amazing in the extort decks because like those are for the slower grinding games. You want the you want some big spells, mm. some high impact spells because you're. You're going to probably gain, I'm roughly saying, 10 life that game. Sure. So they're going to have to deal a bunch. Yep. Yeah, and you have, have your Thralls to regenerate. Yeah. 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 Anyway, good card for limited. Murder Investigation. Yeah. I, I You know, I, I like to think that when I first read a card, I, t I try to take it all in. You know, and I feel yep. like I always miss something. And, of course, the first thing I missed was Enchant Creature you control. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh. Well, why would you be investigating the, your opponent's murders? You don't care what died. You know, I don't care a lot about flavor. <laughs> I love when a card is this flavorful. I love it. It's like why? I would like it when it is yeah. this flavorful. I just don't, yeah. you know, value it that highly. Oh, uh, see, I do. I value the days. effect a lot. Well, I, I value them until I get to play with the cards. I, I really do like to look at the flavor and like I'm the guy that sits in the card. And for those of you that don't know, Jay Spilleran, Mr. McDarby. Mm -hmm. David McDarby. Uh, we've been taking road trips together for tournaments uh, because, you know, the c cars, Todd, and me and him. And he's big into flavor. And I was like, oh, man, he's going to talk about flavor the whole time. And then 10 minutes in, I'm like, go on. <laughs> wait, wait, what did, what did Liliana do to Garrick? This is absurd. Where did Jace go again? Yeah. <laughs> like, what part of Rad? And now I have loved flavor ever since. That's amazing. Yeah, for, for me, Murder Investigation is... Wow, like, good luck ever getting this creature blocked. This is what I want to put on that 5-1, you know? This is what I want to put yeah. on my rotting fin snake. It's like, <laughs> go ahead, give me some value. And go ahead. The, the best just about, whenever. I just want to do one more thing about the flavor. It's like, if a 1-1 one, one dies, no one cares, right? Like, there's not, they well, just, they send, one guy cares. Yeah, they send one detective. They're like, eh, eh, I don't Yeah, know. you lose your dragon, they're like, oh my god, Whoa. what happened to Shivan? We need to figure this Somebody's out. Somebody's finding it out. All right, so... <laughs> Nav Squad Commandos. The weakest battalion ability ever. I, it's, yeah, it's a 4 6 untap, it would. There's a lot of cards these days that just attack and then untap. There's just a, many of them. It's pseudo vigilance. I'm yeah. okay with that. I mean, all right. I, I like the. I mean, God. I wish these abilities like this one would let you target a creature. Like it was just a trigger now that That'd you get be way to do something. Yeah. Yeah, I could, I could see that and give it an upside, you know. The, my favorite thing about this card is that it uses the word commandos in the title. <laughs> That's how bad. And Don't, you probably shouldn't play this. You might play it in limited as your 22nd, 23rd card. Yeah. Because it's more, it's expensive, it doesn't do a lot, battalion mm -hmm. effect is, in, is, is weak. Eh. Eh. Righteous Charge, though. With a sweet new art, almost mm. to the point where I forgot this card was a reprint. Mmm, Svetlin. The problem is because it's uncommon, I, or, no, this wasn't reprinted, was it? It, it was from Portal. Oh, okay, yeah. It is. But, like, because it's an uncommon, I keep thinking it's an enchantment. It just feels like an enchantment. It would be way too powerful, don't get me wrong, and then I realize it's a sorcery. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, Glorious Anthem, doubly doubled. But uncommon sorcery, just seeing sorcery beside uncommon for this ability feels like... It's okay. Yeah. It's one of those cards that, like, looks really crazy powerful, but in the real world, you might have one, maybe two creatures, and it's not that good. It has to be a sorcery, so your opponent's and completely compared, well, prepared and, for the boss. And the flavor, it's eh. the charge to the battle that's yeah. happening. In the name of peace, moderation, and de peace, moderation. Who does anything in the <laughs> name of moderation? I will stab you in the name of moderation. A little but bit. But only a just little. A, just, just enough. Just, just a, enough stabbing. Just enough to get the go. Oh, God. I just appreciate that whole joke. Shielded Passage. Good old-fashioned white prevent damage spell. Yep. Yep. I mean, it's fine. It's a trick. Yep. It's a way to get, you know, it's a way for that rotting fin snake, the 5-1-S yep. guys, to not, you know. To be trade with something. Yeah, to trade way, way up, you know, one for one, essentially, um, mm. and still keep your guy. It's okay. Yeah, I mean, limited. it's fine. It's not as great as the next card. Boom! Love this. I Ooh, the art's awesome. The art is amazing. <laughs> so good. I just love, like, it tells a story. Right. <laughs> and both of those guys are like, you know, hey, Joe. Oh. <laughs> what happened? Hey, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> just, I don't know what we should do anymore. This is amazing. Two oh. guys. Yeah, but um. in, in actual limited play, this is going to be an all-star mm. against Gruul. Yes. They're going to try to blood rush you, and you're just going to kill the guy, right? Like, you you try to get them 
to play their Blood right. Rush on this something is, block. Right. This is the card that when I draw it, all of a sudden I start like, you know, getting really dumb with yeah. my blocks. You know? <laughs> I'm like, I guess I'll just put this guy here. <laughs> I hope you don't have anything. Like I start putting my hand down, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And I start like picking up my pencil oh, those and are I'm your, like Oh, these are your tells? Oh this is gonna help me for 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 the pre release. Yeah, good luck with that. Uh <laughs> I don't do it against against people like yourself. Actually, I do. We don't talk about it. But regardless, <laughs> the idea that I all of a sudden I start throwing out the bluffs yeah. as soon as this card enters my hand. So much fun. I love it. I love that little mini game that you sort it's of start gonna playing. It's going to be very popular. Syndic of Tithes. The most pushed extort card on the planet. Ah! Oh, so good. Can't wait to play it in my cube. I'm so excited. It's the, the, the aggressive draws with this card are just so amazing. And it's just a common. And this is going to be the centerpiece. You're just going to have like... Four of these, like, uh, this is going to be what you just keep grabbing. Because right. if you curve on them, they curve so well together. Right. I mean, I just have a feeling there's going to be some drafters who are able to just take every <coughs> card that has the word extort on it. Does it have the yep. word extort on it? Done. 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 And your your deck is just entire, like, an incremental advantage. Yeah. Just little, tiny, just death by a thousand and cuts. And I think if you bears. go to extort, though, you want to just keep taking the cheapest one. If there's, You don't yeah. try to curve your extort out. I don't know. I mean, there's not much to curve out to, yep. I think, either. But, but... Extort is good. It's yep. so good. I love it. Syndicatize. Go into my cube. Amazing. I don't think it's going to hit constructed. It's just not enough. <laughs> but in, in limited environments, whew, it's an all-star. Yeah, it's very good. Very good. Urbis Protector. I like this card a lot. Urbis. And it's the first angel you can restoration angel. Ah. Yeah, that's, ah. that's what I thought was the cutest with it. That's okay. That's cute. I mean, it is six freaking mana, but... I mean, it's not going to be constructed playable, obviously. I know. Is there any way we can blink it? Can we blink it at all no. in, in limited? Is there anything that blinks it? I don't think so. I don't. I want to say there might be a blue card, but I don't know. You can Simic Charm it back to your hand I and then put it into play. I need maximum value out of this card, Out people. of a card that has two creatures. I mean, you know, in cube, you can Rebel Arc it. Not good enough. No. Not good enough. No. This card's going to be amazing, though. It's, it's, it's definitely a quick limit. pick. Yeah, you're going to take it early. Uh, just just having two creatures is always important because like even if they kill the four four you still get a one one and that doesn't sound great right but it's not but it's it's gonna it's gonna block something it's gonna do something it's better than like you know there's gonna be times when this is actually better than angelic skirmisher I yes. know it's rare but like I'm just saying for what it's worth if they kill your four four angel for six so you mana, mean every time that they kill it it's gonna be better well yeah yeah but, I mean that's okay it's true yeah it's just it is a truth all I'm saying is. In terms of magic, it's a it's a weird thing to wrap your mind around. Hey, this six mana uncommon thing is not you know it might be better in some cases than a six mana rare thing. Exactly. Whatever. Uh, Zarichi Tiger Zarichi. All right, let's talk about the flavor of this one. It's it's why couldn't it have been an elemental cat, man? Come on. Yeah, it it, it it's flaming up. How is that thing Game? going to give you health? Like, even if you own it, I would be scared to own this thing. This looks like, I don't even know. This looks like the weirdest. Like, they're just trying to, like, make something that's not going to hurt yeah. anything. That just does not much. They might have had some art laying around somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I got it. A cat in a doorway. And it gains, gains life. It just, it's, <laughs> it gains you life on its own by just being there. Because no one's going to go mess with you because that exists. Wizards are so busted. This card doesn't mean anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. Anyway, it's limited. It's okay. It's fine. Yeah, it's your 23rd card, and you're not going to feel good about it. Alms Beast, I like this guy a lot. I, I, I want to. I really do. I really want to like this card because I think it's so cool. But 6-6 six, six for 4 isn't big enough for a downside in my mind. You are so spoiled. No, we're, that's just magic, man. It is magic, but it's because you've been spoiled recently for four, for six sixes, for four, like, uh, Desecration Demon that yeah. are just, like, basically upside, upside, upside. But that's just it. With a small bit of downside. Yeah, with a small bit of downside. Just, it, okay. I mean, I like it, and it's really funny that, like, your opponent's going to be, like, blocking just to gain life, and it's really cool. And you play this in limited because it is just... Yeah, I mean, it's rare for a reason. It's really yeah. good. I, I bought one to test out for my cube. I don't think it's going to go in there for sure, but I want to test it. Mm -hmm. For me, this, I mean, again, like... It's obvious that what you want to do with this card is to have no creatures blocking it. And so yeah. if you're playing black-white and you've got all the removal and you got all the kill target creature things, that's what this card does. Yep. You know, Thanks for having the removal. Six, like six and six. It is like the biggest 
power to, and toughness for like a Orzov card of all time. Sure, you know, and I, I, I like the fact that it has a weird, a sort of a weird drawback that you can play around and, and still make it great. Mm -hmm. Like Desecration Demon, there's not much you can do around the sacrificing a creature to tap yeah. it. Like, but this one, you can kill that creature so that they don't get the life link, yeah. and it doesn't stop your attack. So, it, again, cool card. I'm really interested. It's amazing and limited, or should be really good and limited, just because of how huge it is. Yeah. Not good and destructive, I don't think. Now, Cartel Aristocrat was the card that you were talking about. And, yes. And it and has all the symbols there. Um, like Mark was trolling him. In his but it's Twitter still account. trolling me. Mark Rosewater, why does it not have Simic? It still doesn't have it. No, there's no Simic on it. Oh, I thought there was Simic on it. No. I thought it was hiding that bottom left one, which turned out to be Celestia. No, there's no Simic on this card. And I still want to know what Mark Ro Rosewater and the Cartel has against Simic. Hmm. If hmm. the card, I'm going to go to the pre release and I'm going to look through everyone's like decks just to find this card to see if it's on there or not. Well, I mean, we see it right in front of us. I, I, I believe you at this point. Um, but regardless, it's a two mana two two yes. in Orzovian colors. Sacrifice another creature and it gains protection on the color of your choice. And which isn't really working with extort. Which f this this looks like a card that used to do something cool, and I think that's the way he explains it in his yeah. article was that this this card used to work into another flavor of sacrificing your things that Orzov had, and now it so doesn't really have it anymore. Yeah, and so yeah, well, I mean, they do. It's just one of those weird, like the design is left over. I, I agree with that, and and they did have a lot of sweet connections. Like look at like old Selesnya with new Selesnya. Like they work really well together. So sure. this works with old Selesnya. I don't or old Orzov. I don't think old with Orzov Haunt. works with this yeah. that well. The the extort. Right. But uh, stretching on that one. But yeah. It's that's, okay. Yeah. But this card will work with it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. But they were talking about there was some mechanic where like you would sack permanence and they would sack permanence mm -hmm. or non-land permanence, and that just sounds like a disaster in some ways. And that's probably what ended up being, or just awkward. Um, I mean, as a card, it's, it's not... No, it's not that good. It's not that good. I, I, I would much rather this card protects my other cards, not my other cards protect it. I would rather it have said, sacrifice another creature, target creature gains protection. Or sacrifice it. Or sacrifice it, absolutely. I mean, okay, sure. Not great. Death Pact Angel. Oh, my God, Jason Chan, you're amazing. Jason Chan, <laughs> you make amazing pieces of artwork. That I love your beautiful. work. It is beautiful. It is gorgeous. As a card, you're going to high-five... Uh, every time you open it in sealed, you're going to play it in, in draft, and that's pretty much the end of it. Yeah, I mean, you do get a second life out of it, even with no mana investment, which is kind of cool, but it's just, there's so much cooler things you can do with six mana. Like, all of the other things that literally exist are cooler right. than this, this card. This is a card that is, like, made to be cool in ways because it's unique. You yeah. know, like, because it's different. Not because it's incredibly powerful or it's the best thing ever made mm -hmm. for its mana cost. It's just cool and neat. Well, I mean, I also do believe that this is going to have some casual appeal because I think yeah. Nosferatu was awesome. Sure. I mean, like, there's there's no doubt about it that, you know, the casual players particularly, they love angels. Oh, my God, they love angels. And they love it for one of the things, guys, they can get it back. Yep. That's, like, a sweet ability. The, the ability for it to, like, never die, that's, yeah. that's really appealing. And that's mm -hmm. it's cool that it is really appealing, which is great. Uh, executioner swing. Grr! Yeah, you did something wrong, and then you're going to get beheaded. <laughs> Winter came. That's <laughs> so what you did there. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sweet. So, target creature that dealt damage is going to die. Yes. That's awesome. I love it. That's a cool card. High Priest of Penance. And, and for what it's worth, just to go back, because people ask, Executioner Swing, no constructed, all limited. All yes. The time, for sure. Um, a card I don't think is that good in limited or constructed, but is one of the best Johnny slash combo cards ever made, is High Priest of Penance. Everyone, like, I love how you read it and you go like, I just want to do it forever. I but just want to kill You don't think this is good things. in limited? It's good. Well, I mean, it's not great, but it's good. I think it's going to trade, right? You want to be yeah, able to pump if, it. If a card that costs two mana will always trade with the best permanent on your opponent's board, it makes it a first pick. This is just a first pick in limited. Okay. It's terrific. You're, particularly yeah, with yeah. something that, give it, that gives it first strike. Yeah, because you can no, always no, no, draw it. That gives it um, toughness bonus, I'm sorry. Sure. Or when it's yep. damage. Yeah, I think like a card like this, like you will, uh, if it, you can top deck it at any time. That's what's cool. Yep. It trades um, with their best thing. And you can potentially sometimes two for one your opponent. And you want to. Like, yep. well, you know, you're, you're living the dream of this card. And I, again, I think constructed wise, it's just too cute to do the static caster and, you know, nightshade peddler and pump its toughness somehow. And Wait, then, like, too cute. 
Too cute. Too cute. Nightshade Peddler Staticaster is too cute. No, with this card. I Well, I'm going there, sir. I'm going to get my gates. I'm going to get my uh, toughness up. Yeah, you are. I'm going to have vigilance so I can attack with my Staticaster before I ping. Mer, mer. We're going to get stuff done. Peddler, Peddler and Staticaster alone were pretty insane, and then they just so happened to work. Yeah. I think you can't add a third piece to that, though. Great. You can add as many pieces as it you is, want. Like, again, all I said, what I said in the show, and I still believe it, this is one of the best Johnny cards made in the past few years. Yeah. It is, I mean, it just sets your mind to fire with how do I abuse the crap out mm -hmm. of it, and it's so cheap, and it's so just right there. Love it. Kingpin's Pet. I the so good. I it's amazing as in terms of a magic card. Yeah. Whoa. This 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 card is pushed. Woo. I mean it's it's going to be the centerpiece of the aggressive Orzov decks. It's very good. Yeah. That's a heck of a wing drake right there. He will deal so much damage on his own and then add oh. on his ability. Mm. So good. Yeah, very, very good. I like and the name is also pretty sweet. Kingpin's <laughs> Kingpin's pet, baby. How does it fly? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Merciless eviction. Get out. There's no mercy here. Get out. But it's cold outside. Get out. Go. It's more like get off. Get off my planet. Get off my plane. No. Yeah. So. I. This is one of my favorite pieces of art in the set. It's an amazing piece of art. Yeah. I did not. I'm not. I'm not trying it out for the cube. I just think it's too expensive. Really? It doesn't hit enough. Like austere command is just better. Is like, it? Mm -hmm. To get two things instead of just one thing, like that's a that's important. Um, I mean, even even I think Ben Blyweiss, uh he he likened it to catastrophe, <coughs> which you know is lands mm -hmm. or creatures or I think just those two or yeah, just either. And yeah, and it's fine. It's it's okay. It's uh, I like the thing that I like about this, mana. especially in cube, is um is that you can do like whatever you need. Um, so you can like be targeting certain resources until you get to like the sixth turn. Mm -hmm. And then you can attack that, like ignore their two planeswalkers, hit other things, worry about other things, right. and then take care of those. And because it can deal with planeswalkers, I think that's what's like really sets it apart. Right, because it can deal with planeswalkers makes it really powerful. Yeah. Um, I, mm, it, it is one of the few things that can kind of stop an out of control planeswalker. Yeah. Which is what I like about it. You know what I mean? There's, there's times where it's like, once Tamiyo has gone up two counters, and Jace has gone up like a counter or two, you're in trouble. Like yeah. <laughs> they've obviously stopped enough things that you're in. You're really hoping to top deck a card like this, yes. which is cool. Also, flavor text is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once I saw that that the Obsidot moved to action. Ah, so good. <laughs> That's so good. Anyway, regardless. Speaking of Obsidot, I, I want to say Obsidot instead of Obsidat. I'm American. Obsidot to awesome. Eh, 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 eh. So they made Ghost Council, which in its own right, in its own day, was probably the best deck in standard. Ghost yeah, Dad I played that all the time. It was insanely good. Couldn't stop. So good. Ben Friedman was, was, was a genius. And we have, we have version 2.0. It's bigger. It's scarier. It's, you can't kill it. The, what I like most about the stupid thing is if I play one and then you play one, they always live. They'll never oh see God, each other. I didn't even, I didn't even think they about They just, that. they bounce out at the exact right time so they never hurt each other. No they never, way. They never legend rule. It's amazing. So. Because you trigger. Their triggers on the end of your, at the end step and then at the beginning of don't your. Don't they trigger at the same time at the beginning of the end of. Nope. Mm. At the beginning of my end step, mine goes away. At the beginning of your upkeep, yours comes back. Oh, it's upkeep. Right. And so the, in your end step, oh, yours goes okay. away. And then my upkeep, mine comes back. That's. Kill you. And they don't, and, 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 and they create complete parity. They don't do anything, <laughs> like... Well, in, they in some regards, I mean, you know, you're not... One might attack, one might not be able to, but... No, they'll be able to attack. They well, gain haste. Yeah. And, of course, Svetlin, Mr. Velenov, is the guy who has been doing our Invitational Qualifier playmats. And, Those uh, are pretty important around here. They are absolutely to us, and and we just love having him on board. Actually, it's the, it's the only playman I've played with in the last like two years. Nice. I played with it. Yeah, yep. I won one. You won an IQ. I did. Now I can play with the invitation. One thousand lashes. Very slowly distributed, though. Your sleepness that is so pillory in the first Ravnica block. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you get beaten. <laughs> For the exact same thing. And you can't activate its abilities. Yes, that's true. That that's that's important, yeah. Right. Especially when so many creatures have abilities now. 
Yeah, they're always so crazy good. So I, I love it. It can't attack. It can't block. It's just going to be beaten, and you're just going to pay for it. Yeah, but okay. very slowly. Those 1,000 lashes will take a very long time. Very good and limited. Yes. Non-constructed. Orzhov charm. What is going on with this charm? Um, all, all I know... <laughs> I don't, I There's don't so know. many words in this charm. It's so just, weird. It kills a guy. That is important. It does kill a guy. I'm so glad it kills a guy. Don't get yeah. me wrong. I love that. It's Vendetta. That's cool. But, like, return dark creatures you control. And all, and all auras you control attached to it to their owner's hand. Yes. What? This is almost as weird as the Gruul's brand ability. It doesn't make no, sense. No, but, like... They just put it on there to put it on there. Well, yeah, because, you know what? You know, this is my defense for WotC at all times. There are people that play this game that I do not know exist. Like, you think of the old angel, one of those three angels. Like, we had Sigarda, right. and we had Gisela that were popular, and then we had that one that only EDH... Oh, had, like no, the yeah, big ball of the enchantment and, and about enchantments. Brings, yeah. And well, I don't, I, that's not that's a card to me. Yeah, it's not us, but he, that person exists out there, and I guarantee someone out there in the comments going to be like, yeah, this card is already in my deck, and it's, it's like awesome. my favorite card, and it does amazing, and all yada. Yeah. Like, I like the fact that it returns a, a creature with converted mana cost one or less. You mean Death Rite Shaman? Yeah, it returns yeah. Death Rite Shaman. Yeah, just, um, it, that's what the, 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 the text could say, and that's what it would do. Uh, in cube, I like it in cube. It's going to return mm -hmm. my uh, Mother of Runes and stuff like that. It's yep. going to return my Figure of Destiny back to the battlefield. Uh, it's going to do things like that. It's going to kill creatures. I don't know exactly what's going on with the return creature, but at the very least, it's cute in that regard. Yeah, I mean, protecting your spell, like maybe even being able to protect like your Geist alone, you know, like just returning a creature could be sweet. I, it I, could be sweet. I mean, like again, I'm just trying to think of like cube. I'm returning, you know, uh, faceless butchers or you know, bone mm. shredders and stuff. You know, like there's, there's ways this is good. Yeah, I, I think bouncing it's sweet. white black is weird though. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> the card is weird, and even the the art is even more unique. Like, it's cool. Yeah, uh, Mr. Boros has some guy's discerning face on a charm. It's fine. You purge the profane. You purge it. You just take out those nasty thoughts. Mm -hmm. They're gone. Mm. Now this is a card. As usual, when you start looking at discard spells, um, they have to be extremely, extremely powerful to impact constructed, like Rakdos's return. Yeah. Or they have to be really, really powerful and sealed, which they kind of are by default. Mm -hmm. And this one is, you know, what you get in these situations is you get to parity or you get to top deck mode or whatever it is, and you get to a couple cards, and they get to a couple cards, and you're like, all right, purge the profane, nice bomb spell, nice bomb spell gets discarded. Yeah, that doesn't really happen that often. It does, that, but that's what you want it to do. That's, yeah. that's how you want to play it in seal. I like mind rots because mind rots cost three. Um, you do want to, I, I do like to take the draw and have a mind rot effect. And even this one will be good enough because sealed is very high variance. And if yeah. your opponent mulligans on the plate and you mind rot affect them, the game is probably over because they just can't get to enough cards in general to do the things their deck's trying to do. Right. Like basically when you mind rot them in that scenario, yeah. when you mind rot them and they discard two spells, probably winning. Yeah. Because you just removed so much action from their hand, there's nothing they can do. I, I don't really think this needed to cost four mana. Well, and I I don't like the the gain two on it isn't that great of an ability because it doesn't have reach. I think the reach on the burn spell or the discard spells have always been the other powerful thing because they have they can do something else. Part you know, they me, can actually win. Part of me thinks this was four mana just because extort exists. Probably just, yeah. just because cheap I, spells I make think the Orzhov better. Orzhov does seem like it's a little overcosted, but I think that's important. Could be very well why. Now, Treasury Thrall is the card that you get in your guild yeah. pack, um, which is just good. I mean, it's, it, it's Sun Titan again. More or less, yeah. yeah. And and Joey blocking it. Um, it it's just, I mean, it's a 4-4. Four, four. You pump it. You do what you can. It It's not going to impact anything beyond limited, but in limited... And, and, and casual, I think, in sort of a commander space, this mm -hmm. card's sweet. Yeah, no, I really like this card. Anything that gives you, you know, card advantage from your graveyard is always powerful. Like, we saw Sun Titan. I know it's not a 6-6, six, six, and it doesn't have the effect right away, but it does have Extort, and it is a great limited card. Yeah. I mean, the ability to return something from your graveyard and then play it and use this card's Extort ability for it yep. is great. I think that's awesome. Um, Viscopa Confessor. Oh, Viscopa. That's that's an interesting way to use a pay life mechanic, particularly with extort. Yeah, yeah with extort yeah. and Orzov, where you're probably going to have a life advantage. I like anyway. this card. 
this card is sweet. Like it is, it's it's powered down in some ways. I think mm -hmm. a because Orzhov cards need to be expensive because mm -hmm. you're going to use extort with all of them. So it's probably a mana or two more than it really needs to be. Uh, two, it has extort on it, and and three, it's just you know it takes advantage of all this extort stuff you've been doing to allow you to get the best and, card in their hand. And you don't want for a limited card something to cost more less like like. If it costs like three or four, mm -hmm. you'd get their best card. Oh yeah, every time, and every that that would be five. frustrating. Like this yeah. card would be a little bit too good. So at five, they'll have enough time to play some of their stuff. But you're gonna get like a removal spell or maybe a dragon, and it's pretty good. Yeah, you should be getting like game bombs for that type of stuff. Now, Viscopa Guild Mage. This card is sweet. Yeah, this uh, card is so sweet. Yeah, it's it's very awesome. Like just for six mana, you're going to be able to. Like, th my favorite thing is it lets a creature that got blocked deal its damage to the opponent in a very unique way. Yeah. The fact that, like, it's, it's, it's one thing for the two abilities to work together, mm -hmm. but, I mean, they just work perfectly yes. together here. I mean, like, this is what you want to do at six mana in the, in the black-white deck. Yes. This got lifelink, and you're going to lose all that life. Anyway. Yeah, you just get that. It's, it's just another extort, right? You're getting life, they're losing life. That's, I mean, I, I got feelings for constructed applications on this. I mean, exquisite blood. It's yeah, it's the exquisite blood. It's an blood infinite combo, mage. yeah, eh, more or less. Yeah, sure. It's amazing. I don't. It's a two card combo. Okay. You 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 get excited about two card combos hey, when they're in magic. There's certain combos I'm excited about in this world. All right. I don't know if the exquisite blood one. I just know that this, this is one, these cards. I like this because it's no. just what I want it to do. I love these the same as like the ascension plus the milling because it's like have you ever seen that picture online of like. Cats land on their feet. Buttered toast lands butter side down. So if you put butter uh, butter toast on a cat, it turns <laughs> into <laughs> and that's that's you know a, a anti gravity machine. Okay. And like those are what these combos are. You put them together and lose, gain, lose, you put, gain, you lose. You put them together and it's a cat and butter toast. All right. Yes. That that card is this card is sweet. I think it has constructive possibility. It's absolutely amazing and limited. Yeah. Wow. Um, back in Apparition, it's back. It is. Back, and baby. And it's not going to do anything like it did last time. What, what? Uh, it didn't really do much last no, time. No, that's what I said. It's not going to do anything like it did last time. Oh, yeah. The same. Which is fine. And that thing is from Eventide. It got me to talk about it twice or say the same thing twice. That is the most it's ever done. That's good. That's fine. All mm -hmm. right. It's not great. It's not in any format. It's not that great. We have, we have a cremate that draws you a card. A card has to be much more important than a 1-1. One -one. Yeah. I mean... There's ways in which you can say it's going to give you a blocker and it's going to give you evasion, but that's not really what you want to do. Mm. I'd much rather draw a card off yep. that type of effect from Cremate. Mm. Gift or Vorzova, though. Now, this card's sweet. Woo! This card is really, if really If you do good. not kill the creature that this gets on, you're dead. It's over. You can't race it. I mean, and just adding stuff like Viscopa Guild Mage that we just talked about, I mean... I mean, I mean, it's Armadillo good. Cloak was super powerful. Right. And that gave Trample plus another plus one plus one. And I don't know if that's more important than flying, to be honest, especially in a limited environment. Evasion, yeah, and, and lifelink in that regard. Ooh, this card is so sick. Yep. Not going to make it in Constructed, but in Limited, All-Star. Yes. This card is a Limited All-Star. Immortal Servitude. Now, this yeah. was one of those where I feel like Wizards every time leaves like one good card like randomly out there. They don't give it to anybody in spoiler season and they just kind of let it live. Now, I know the exact one they did that for in Dark Ascension. Which and its name was Hellrider. Oh, yeah. Hellrider didn't go to any spoiler site, didn't go to, you know, any particular person to spoil individually, but is now one of the best cards in the format. They like, just, like, they know it's going to exist in a very spike-ish way, mm -hmm. and they just don't use the hype. Yeah, that's cool. Right. right. So they just kind of lay it out there. So this is the first card. This is, like, you know, when the spoiler was first released, and everybody's on Twitter, like, OMG, mm -hmm. blah, 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 Well, I think this is good, and this is good. And everyone just sort of kept mentioning Immortal Servitude, Immortal Servitude. Yep. Like, it's easy to misread it, to think of uh, as it as being X or less, which I think yes. is way too good. Um, but just as X is good. Yeah. Like, just as X equals 1, X equals 2, X equals 3. Like, there's ways in which in a white aggro deck or whatever, like, it's coming back. Like, for me, in cube, the white-black aggro deck would love this. Like, you know, I'm well, playing Mother of Runes. I'm playing my, like, two ones, you know, for whatever. You finally wrath. I play four mana. They all come back. Go. I mean, there also could be a, a unique, like, combo in there somewhere. Like, maybe mm -hmm. you just find the same converted mass creature combo. Yeah. And... Um, it doesn't matter what they do. You yeah, just play yeah. Immortal Servitude to get all your pieces out. Yeah, and then and that just win. happens. And you use, like, Grizzly Salvages and things like that to, like, generate the, the, the graveyard. So, I mean, sure. it could be there. Like, it, it definitely looks like it has 
potential of being absolutely busted. It does. I, I, how do we feel about it? It feels pretty good and limited just because, you know, everything that has X equals whatever, it's, is whatever is going to be the best thing. It's you can going do to be it. an animate dead, and sometimes it'll give you more benefits for two. I mean, it's. I would probably play it. Um, I mean, obviously, I'll play it just right away. Like it well, just value. has. It just has to have a rare symbol, and it's in my deck if I can cast it. More or less. I mean, you for know, the first couple of weeks, yeah. Right, just to see. Like I remember, mm -hmm. volatile rig came out, and everybody was like that car is completely garbage. It's I'm like, so good. <laughs> they still <laughs> think it's bad. <laughs> still People think. still don't put it in their decks, and it just mm -hmm. wins games by itself. So if at worst I get back a couple of two drops or something, like that's pretty good for five yeah. mana, um, depending on what they do. But Immoral Ser Servitude, very good. Could have constructed applications, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So we're up to the key <sighs> rune. It people complained about this one too, and they're like, blah, blah, blah. Or only makes like this one four, like Horn Turtle, whatever. I'm like, look, man, what do you want to do as the Orzhov deck? You want to not attack. You want to yeah, hang you back. you want to defend with life gain. And right. I want you to make me attack me so I can do nothing and just incrementally kill you with my yeah. extort spells. It's not like you're going to go aggressive with all these creatures. I hope not. Like with these defenders that you're like third picking because you need extort ability. You're five mana one threes. Like, yeah. Come on, guys. Like that's what this card wants to do. Yeah, this is perfect. It's a good card. I like it. Um, we have Godless Shrine, which is some of the best art yeah. ever. I just wow. love that the the red and the purple and the orange is just it's yeah there's like the little like sort of sprinklings yep. of light and and color in the middle of all that darkness mm -hmm. is just gorgeous absolutely amazing I think it's actually better than the original Gala Shrine art for what it's worth and sweet just yep. terrific and lastly the we most important card in the set the most important Orzhov Guildgate illustrated by our own John Avon. He's pretty good. He is excellent. He is a terrific fellow. I have five pieces of his art in my living room. As you should. Yes. And you can get them at StarCityGames.com. Where's so, that? What's that? What is that? That's a weird thing. I yeah. Know, heard Never heard of that before. Mm. But John did a terrific job here. And, you know, I, I think what you have in these is you have amazing art and you have the ability to do some sweet flavor text. Yeah. Everything's cool. Just a small price up front. Yep. That's and all you got to do. I mean... So, ladies and gentlemen, those were all the white cards. Those were all the Orzov cards. This is me. This is Brad Nelson. We have been sitting with you talking about Gate Crash. But we are not even close to done. We ain't even halfway done. Nope. And tomorrow we are going to continue our struggle, our strife. Our shit. This is so demanding. Oh, my God. You guys I, don't know. I, where did I go <laughs> wrong? Why am I not? An, we have know, been training for weeks. Not very, very, very or anything. Tough anyway, guys, thank you for watching. We will see you guys here tomorrow. We will be back for what are we, what are we covering tomorrow? The black and the Demir cards. Ooh, Demir cards. But the first the first rule of Demir is we don't talk about it. Except that church that talks about it over the Simic that makes no sense to me. I I am so mad about that card. I'm Evan Irwin, Brad Nelson. We'll see you tomorrow. We are tapping the cards. So you don't have to. I thought you were going to miss your outro. That would have been terrible. We don't miss outros around here. Okay, that's we're good. We're outro missers. <laughs>